Hello and welcome to my video. So in this video I will be sculpting a Chinese dragon. So as you can see here, I've already actually started, I kind of forgot to record, but I first started off by making a slab, and this is actually for my more is more project, so that just means more detail, more size, and I went with something very complicated, which would be a Chinese dragon. And so, as I was saying, I made a uh, mold, like I made, I put a bunch of plastic bags together to like, kind of like a tube, and then I, I took a slab and I, I put it over the, the tube of plastic bags. So it was kind of like a support system. And then, as you can see here, I, I bent the, the tube, which was pretty hard, actually. I had to cut triangles out from the, the side I was going to bend the tube. And then I had to smooth it all out. And they were, I was scared of, of it, like, cracking or breaking here. But luckily, it was all in one piece. And then I had to let it dry a bit. And then I took out all the plastic. So I wanted to take, talk about this project a little bit and why I'm sculpting this Chinese dragon. So this is one of the more ambitious projects I've taken on inside my Ceramics 2 class. Um, and at uh, here at college, um, Ceramics 2 has been really fun so far, my Ceramics journey, and I've made a lot of other videos about uh, my Ceramics side. So go check those out too. Um, and here I'm actually taking out the plastic from the tube, and it did not collapse because it was uh, slightly leather hard, and so it was enough to uh, hold itself up. Um, so the reason I'm making this project was as I said, it was a more is more project. So the requirement for this project is less is more, more is more. So you have to make two separate pieces. It has to be a minimum of 12 inches in any direction, and each of them have to. They can either relate or they don't have to. And so for these projects, I actually decided them for them not to relate. I'm first making a Chinese dragon, and that's going to be in separate pieces. It's going to be a very, very large sculpture. As you can see here, this is just one piece of the sculpture, and it is still very large. And then the other project is a teddy bear sculpture, which I'm going to be coming out with another video um, about the teddy bear sculpture. That one's a little bit more simpler because it's less is more. You're supposed to use less detail, less, you know, make the visual argument that less is more. And then for the more is more piece, obviously it's the exact opposite. You have to make the visual argument that more is more, which would mean um, the interpretation I took, which would be the size is more, the detail is more, and overall it, it more is more. And so I proved that with uh, doing the Chinese dragon. And as you can see here, I since I had the, the tube, my vision was the Chinese uh, dragon like kind of going up and over and through the wall. Like as you hung this piece up, it would be going through a wall. And so you'd see like the back of it come out of the wall. You'd see like the tail and you'd see like a hand and then like a head of the Chinese dragon. And I think that I did this pretty well. Um, I made the argument more is more, definitely made that a visual argument. And in this piece, I, I'm actually doing this wrong right here inside this clip. Um, I figured out later that the the spines that I made underneath the, the dragon on the on the belly of the dragon, I would say, um, that they were going the wrong direction. And then the uh, hair at the top that I'm making right here. And I did not know at this time when I was making this that the project was going to take me so long. I must have taken at least 30 hours, um, probably more, because I did so much off camera, so much work that's just so boring and so repetitive because I had to do scales across the entire dragon. And that took a really long time. The scales were the, definitely the longest thing it, it took so far uh, for this dragon to make it. Um, it did take me a really long time, but I did meet the due date, which was last Friday. We did a critique, and it was really cool seeing everyone else's ideas. It was an exciting critique inside my class, and we just talked about um, how it makes that visual argument of more is more, and why you decided to go with this. Um, I don't know what made me drawn to a Chinese dragon, but I thought it would look cool, and I really wanted a huge sculpture, and it was a big task to take on. As you can see here, I am starting these scales. And if you uh, watched my videos for a while, I actually did do this technique, this scales technique, um, on a different sculpture I made, which it was a koi fish. And the koi fish I had to use, I used a tape measure, and I just bent it a little bit, and um, I used those as scales. For this project, I need these scales a little bit bigger, so I did the same technique, basically, just added some duct tape and made the scales a little bit bigger. And as I said, this is what took the absolute longest. This took so long, I took full class periods, which is like like six hours straight just making scales and that that was just a pain in the neck I cannot emphasize that more it was really really annoying um, and I had to do this on both sides of the dragon I do this on the neck of the head of the dragon I do this on the tail and it just took so long as you can see here after they're rendered out pretty nicely it does look really good I think I think that the scales really add a lot of detail and do make that visual argument as I said more is more 
Um, I went in with a pin tool and then I just I just lightly drew on the surface and then what I ended up doing was I didn't add any um, clay on to make the scales. I just carved away to making the scales look like they're added on, added on or layered at, of some sort. And it was very rough at first and then once you once I went back in with a pin tool and some other tools and like I refined it, it really brought it together and I really liked it. Um, but yeah, it does take a really really long time. Um, to fix the pro problem that I mentioned earlier, the underbelly and the um, the hair on the back of the dragon um, going the wrong direction, I actually just cut out the underbelly and flipped around the dragon, which took a really long time because um, I just kind of had to take apart the tube and put it back together. Um, at this point, though, I wasn't worried about it falling apart. It was really stable. And then, as I said, I met the time requirement. I ended up having to bring this project home because I had to work on it even more. Um, I only had like a week to finish, and this is me making the head. So this clay was super soft when I started working with it. It was reclaimed clay, and as I said in my vase video, my making vase videos, it was it's a reclaimed clay is like a really soft clay that's already been used and you just add more water to it. And so that's why it was so soft. You can actually see inside the time lapse that the nose or the snout of the dragon is falling down and cracking right there. It's like it's just separating from the rest of the clay because it's lost some of its plasticity. Um, so basically I had to just use like a chopstick kind of thing and just hold up the, the nose of the dragon. But I sculpted it very I just I just kept refining to be honest. I sculpted it solid and as you saw I just carved right into the block of clay. Like it was a just a big block of soft clay and I just went at it and just started. And it worked really well actually. Um, it really came together pretty fast. I just had to keep refining, keep smoothing out surfaces, keep cutting away, keep keep adding, just just kept moving around the piece until I was really happy with the, the results. Um, I didn't actually make, um, there's like whiskers on Chinese dragons because I looked at a lot of reference photos. Pinterest is a good helper for reference photos, but I didn't really want to rely um, too much on someone else's um, uh, look or idea. I wanted to make my own Chinese dragon look, which I think I successfully did. But as I said, um, Chinese dragons do have whiskers when I was looking into the look of Chinese dragon. And I used wire for the whiskers because clay was not going to cut it. It would be way too fragile and then it would probably break. But for the hair of the Chinese dragon, of course, I used clay. And I just had to make sure that I kept wetting the tip of the hairs, uh, like the, the shape of the hairs, I guess. Because if I hadn't, they probably would have cracked. And then, as you can see here, since I carved it solid, it was really, really heavy uh, when I was picking it up and stuff. And it was still soft, really soft at this point. So I can like open open and close the mouth it would obviously crack but I could definitely shape it and move it around still at this point but I did have to carve it out um, so then it would dry out a little faster and I got a lot of clay back from that um, and sorry it's so zoomed in I end up doing a YouTube short which I've been doing a lot recently and I I did a, um, a portrait mode um, like I filmed it in portrait mode but I'm just adding the teeth here and the teeth were really fragile like I said inside the hair like the hair was like kind of the same thing as the teeth the ends were drying out a lot faster so I just had to keep spraying them with water but that was no problem really and this took me a really long time as you can see I'm, I'm just watching YouTube and just working on refining the entire thing this is it just took a really long time to get the shape that I was happy with and then I didn't really consider this but I'm not sure how I'm gonna hang this up on my wall because it is gonna be a weird shape to hang up um, but I'm honestly I'll, I'll do that I'll figure out that problem later and then I did have to do scales like I mentioned on the neck of the Chinese dragon and I don't really want to mention this because it, no one noticed this during their critique, but the scales are going the wrong direction on the dragon. I was literally laying down in bed, about to go to um, bed after I had worked on this for hours on end, and then I, all of a sudden it just hit me that they were going the wrong direction. I was thinking about the project, and then it just, oh, I kicked myself about it. And this happened before, actually, too. I had posted a YouTube short of me making scales for the dragon. And then on the back of the dragon, the body of the dragon, the scales were, someone commented, the scales were going the wrong way. And they were going opposite directions. And it saved me so much time that they had mentioned that because I hadn't refined the scales um, to an extent. Like I hadn't finished the scales on one side. And it was, it would have, it cost me so much time if I hadn't uh, seen that comment. So thank you for whoever commented that on the YouTube short. But I don't think, I, I can't change the scales on the dragon's neck anymore. Um, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. It doesn't look weird or off. It's just, um, it, I know about it, so it's kind of bothersome to me but I'm not gonna fix it at this point it's too late um, I just I just 
I don't know, I can't, I can't help to uh, fix it. And then as you can see here, I'm making the tail for the Chinese dragon, and I had to do more scales, and then more hair for the back of the, the um, back of the tail, and I hollowed everything out too, so it didn't explode. And that is something I am concerned about inside this sculpture. I'm a little concerned that it's too thick, um, but I, when we had a visiting artist, uh, Kyungmin Park, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, but it was a visiting artist, and she makes these really cool, like, um, sculptures of kids, and, like, coming out of these bubbles, like, very cool forms and um, she showed our class that um, you can just take a pin tool poke through the sculpture all the way through and then if it's hollow um, it, you can just cover up that hole that pin tool you just made and it'll make the sculpture not it less likely to explode which was really great and I used that for this and hopefully it won't explode inside the kiln um, but this is the final product of the sculpture the Chinese dragon sculpture I'm very happy and also I added the wire onto the face of the Chinese dragon I am very happy with the um, the result of this project after hours and hours of uh, working on it and uh, um, lots of frustration but a lot of fun um, I finally finished so I hope you guys enjoyed this video it is a little bit of a long one, so um, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.